Good evening, folks. I just threw another log on the fire. It's smoking a little bit. The uh, It's pouring. It's pouring so hard here today. And uh, the wood got a little wet. But that'll dry right off as it burns. So I hope you all had a good day. It's been a busy one here. Even though it's been raining, it's been it's been pretty busy. It's all right. Now, this morning I was in the, the chicken coop. And I told you that I was going to talk about a, a foraging book that I find for beginners is one of the best out there. Now, if you're looking for an experienced foraging book, this isn't going to be it. Uh, but this is a pretty good book, and I'll post a, a picture. The author is Steve Brill and Evelyn Dean. Wild man Steve Brill. You may have heard of him. You may you may even know him. Uh, the book's title is Identifying and Harvesting Edible and Medicinal Plants. The book I am referring to it is a paperback and it is about 8 by 11 like a standard sheet of paper plain paper like copying paper it's that big so it's not one that you want to bring out into the field very often it's not one that you can stick in a backpack easily or in your back pocket those I find Although are they're useful, those little pocket guides they don't they don't give very much information in my opinion. Uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, but this this book that I'm talking about is pretty hard to bring out in the woods with you. I will admit that. And the the pictures are not photographs; they are sketches. They are very detailed sketches, folks. So I just wanna, I just wanna know what, want to let you know what you could be looking forward to. Okay. Now Amazon has raised its price since I looked at it uh, about two weeks ago. So the price now is like thirty-five dollars. To me, I still think it's a, a pretty good buy, in my opinion. It has recipes in there, and as basically every every edible and medicinal plant from A to Z, again, the beginner's guide. Now, yesterday, when I did the video on mullen, the, the information on the mullen is spot on in that book, in my opinion. It... It just goes into pretty good detail. Now, if you're a master forager, uh, you're probably not going to find the information you need. But if you want a book just to, to play around with or keep up on your shelf, if you get hungry and you want to see what's edible in your area, I would say this is the perfect book to have. It's going gonna, it's gonna to allow you to survive. It's going to allow you to know what to look for. So, I think, in my, my opinion, this book is the best beginner's book out there. That's just my opinion. Um, and, there, you know, there are recipes in there. It's just, it's just a good book. It's just a good book. In my opinion, it's a good book. As someone that has foraged, foraged for many, many, many years and taught foraging classes, um, the book is good enough for me. So, and if you're a master forager, then you don't really even need a book, right? Right? So, that's how I look at it. So, I'm on here a little late, and I apologize. I was up to my cousin Shay's for a little bit, and then I came home. Threw a, 
a log on the fire and get down more than I wanted it to because it's just it's just hot in here folks you know when it's when it's above 35 outside it's too much for a fire inside but it's damp and you know starting a fire and getting a little smudge warms up the place too much so you know i've got a couple of windows open folks that's just the way it is that's just the way it is so after i put a a log or two on the fire i found that i didn't have reception now that's the problem here with with living in the woods sometimes i have reception most of the time i do not that's why i cannot go live very often uh, I used to go live an awful lot. I used to go for walks and, and go live and people would join. and and But something has happened. I don't know if the tower got damaged or I'm not really sure. But the reception is, is worse now than it was when I first moved here. So, and by reception, I'm talking about data, folks. Okay, I I don't have internet here at all. So... That's just the way it is, and I kind of I kind of like it that way. So, I'd like to talk about a conversation that I had with my I'm I'm not even going to say the person. Um someone I had with someone later this afternoon. We were talking about the food scarcity, even in this area, and how hard it was to try to find certain things, and there aren't as many deals, and what you can find, it's it's been picked over pretty good. So this person was found a good deal on pork loin, and they had canned it up, you know, with a pressure canner and all of that, and they were they were telling me that. They were they were pretty surprised at how bare the shelves were. So I guess she asked if she if they had any cases of vegetables out back and what they had was on the shelf, folks. And you know, this is this is in Maine. We're we're kind of at the end of the the delivery, the truck delivery. And, you know, Maine, it has to come through, wherever it comes from, it has to come through basically the whole length of New England. So we're the, we're the last to really see the shortages, but we're seeing them now. Uh, but she said, you know, she was canning up as much protein as she can. She's hitting the meat deals, right? And I said, what about vegetables? And... I don't think she had gotten that far yet. And I said, you know, I said, if things get hard, you know, it's not only going to be meat that we're going to need. And she understood what I said right there. So, you know, and she'd even come to the conclusion that if, if times got bad, you know, she has two goats and a horse. And I said, would you, would you or could you eat your goats and horse? And she thought about that, and she thought about it for a little bit, and she goes, well, maybe there'll be someone that has a cow. You know, I eat your cow when you eat my horse. So people are already starting to think that way, folks. They know, they know in their mind and in their heart that, Tough decisions are going to have to be made. And, you know, if, if, you, if you have livestock, goats, horses, whatever, cows, whatever, whatever you grow, they could be for anything. They could be for breeding. They could be for milk. They could be to make goat cheese, goat milk. You know, if times get that hard, we're going to have to start thinking in that direction, folks. 
Now that's hired for a lot of people that that bought their animals for pets. I will never do that here. Um, any any animal that I bring in has to have a purpose, and that's just the way it is for me. You know. Now I do. I have a an older Muscovy doc I call Papa Love, and he's just been friendly from. The day that he was hatched, I swear, and he's he's still friendly. He follows me all around the yard, and he likes it when I scratch under his under his chin, I call it, and down his neck, and wags his tail and bobs his head. He just raises his crest on his head, and he's just so happy to see me. And and he brings me quite a lot of joy. But like I told my cousin Shay, you know, when he's given me a lot of joy and, and I've given him a good life. I've, I've given him kindness and love and attention. But when his, when his time comes where he will have to be called, his time will come. Now in the perfect world... You know, everything is going right, and grain prices weren't going through the roof, and and all of that. You know, the, in the perfect world, he would be kept around just to live out his old age. Um, but in today's world, food is food, folks. Food is food. Now, would he be the first one that I call? No, no. I would hang on to him for as long as I could. You know, that's just the way it is, and that's just what may happen, folks. That just might be what happens, you know. So, in the one second after, they held on to their dogs, right? In the book, they held on to their dogs, and the, the dogs could barely find enough to eat, and the dog was nothing but skin and bone. And honestly, the the dog should have put, been put down way before, way before that, in my opinion. But it was a pet, right? It was a pet. And I get that. But at what service are you doing to the dog if the dog is, is slowly starving to death, you know? So, the... Uh, going to be some tough choices, folks, I'm afraid. I'm afraid there's going to be tough choices. There's always hope, and there's always faith, though, right? There is, but there's also reality, folks. When you go to the store and you see the shelves getting sparser and sparser and the price is going up and you're not bringing home as many groceries as you once once were with the same amount of money you know i watched a i watched a video i'm not i'm not even sure where i saw this video it was it was early this morning because you know the whole sleep thing is not happening but I watched I watched a few videos this morning. I did have reception this morning and they were talking about um growing gardens. And it was a woman and she said people think they can just dig a hole in the dirt and pop in a seed and cover it back up and water it every once in a while and and expect to get expect to get food you know i i've been gardening all my life ever since i was almost old enough to walk my parents gardened so i grew up gardening and let me tell you there's quite a learning curve with gardening folks you know if you have if you've never gardened before and you've got the seed and you've got the fertilizer and and you say, okay, this year I'm I'm gonna have somebody come in and I'm gonna have them plow that 
that part of that lawn up and I'm going to have a big beautiful garden. That may happen. You may you may get some food out of that. But not every year is guaranteed. A couple of years ago we had a horrible tomato tomato growing season. And before that, I think it was four years ago or five years ago, we had so much rain here in Maine that the seeds were rotting. You'd let the you'd let the soil dry out a little bit and we'd get another two or three or four inches of rain and those seeds would rot. We just had so much so much rain that even for this gardener here, uh, I gave up. I gave up about mid-August because things were rotting and things were stunted. There was not enough sun. There was not enough warmth. And even the, the water-loving plants weren't doing well at all. Cabbage. Cabbage. Cabbage weren't doing anything. Even though it was cool and they were getting the moisture, they were not getting the sun. And so I just, I walked away from my garden at one August and, and that was that. You know, I had food up on the shelf and went to the stores a little bit more than I normally would and stocked up and bought some meat and brought it home and canned it and yeah, so we, we're never guaranteed any garden season at all. We're never guaranteed, even with the perfect soil, even though you, you have a green thumb and you're well experienced and everything is perfect except for the weather, right? Some of you have experienced that. So here it's... Here in Maine, it's usually the the wet, rainy garden season that that kills a lot of our garden plants. We have droughts here, where it's so dry that you just have to keep lugging water and lugging water and lugging water to to save your plants. Right now, it's now I have a. I have a dug well, right, and I've got a, a pump and all of that. It's not plumbed into the house, but it's plumbed up to the outside of the house, right? So I run a generator and the pump comes on and and then I have water pressure, right? But I don't have any any in the house here at all. So a shallow well, uh, sometimes you can pump them dry if you're up there trying to Get your garden going, right? Trying to save your garden, but your water's getting lower in the well, and your well runs dry. So gardening isn't as easy as as some think it is, especially if you've never gardened. It, it looks pretty easy, but there's a lot of there's a lot of work in a garden. A lot can go wrong, a lot can go right, but there's quite a learning curve. Quite a learning curve, folks. So, I guess that's it. I'm awfully tired. And I think I'll close my windows just a little bit. In case it rains even harder, I don't I don't want the, the rain to come in. So, there's that book, folks. Uh, that's one that I recommend. And one I keep on hand. And, and several people have borrowed it. With the understanding, they only get to have it for two days. And if I don't get it back in two days, I go to their house and get it from them in two days. That's one book that I do not want uh, to lend out and not get back. So it's a good beginner book, folks. The price has gone up. The price has doubled. I think I got mine for like nine ninety nine, and I think it was like nineteen ninety four. I bought it. So, check it out. Check it out. Now, I know the reviews on Amazon, uh, I don't know what they were expecting. Um, but it is a beginner book, folks. It's not for 
it's not for the master forager. So look at it knowing that it's a beginner book, but it's all it's all you're going to need, folks. It's all you're going to need. All right. Now there's they cover plants, even though I think the author is from New York. Uh, a lot of those plants are um, across the United States. OK, so if you want one specific to your area and region, um, you're just going to have to go to a bookstore and <clears throat> see what they have there or get online and, and see what they have there. Now, I know, I don't know about out west or anything, but here in this region, there are pocket-sized books, the Pedersen, P-E-T-E-R-S-O-N. Now, I have a few of those pocket size guide Peterson books, Pedersen books. Um, even though they are colored pictures, again, there's, there's not enough information in there for me. You can identify it. It'll let you, it'll let, give you enough information to identify it, but really not much of anything else. It doesn't tell you how to prepare it or, or anything. It's just basically an identification book. Whereas the book that I am, am referring to goes from where it's located, what to look for, what stages is good to pick, um, and recipes possible recipes okay so that is it this is getting way longer i intended 10 minutes so i am going to close for now um if you like this material you can like subscribe share i know a lot of you have been sharing thank you so very much i appreciate that and welcome back for those of you who have been here for a while, any of you new subscribers, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Appreciate you being here. And uh, hopefully I can get some information out there and foraging. I was going to do, I was going to do a rose hip video today, but it was in the pouring rain and that area was flooded it was flooded folks it had two feet of water where the other day i could walk right out there so we've gotten a lot of rain with the warm weather the a lot of the snow is melting which means uh streams and brooks and things are are swelling and starting to go over their banks or for at least here anyway so that video will come because i think it's very important and so you can be look forward be looking forward to that at some point when I can get to where the, the wild rose bushes are. Okay, good night. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fire and have a good night.